Stocks sell off on Wall Street with key indices falling over 2% each as bond yields hit levels not seen since November in the backdrop of concerns over higher for longer rates. And earnings miss and tap outlook on consumer spending from Home Depot also fuels selling in consumer discretionary stocks. Stocks in the Asia-Pacific open in the red following a weak handover from Wall Street. The SGX Nifty 2 signals a lower start for the Indian market. Crude prices slip about a percent to trade around $83 a barrel as concerns over global economic growth and demand outweigh supply cuts and rise in crude inventories in the United States. The NSE extends trading hours and interest rate derivatives till 5 p.m. from 3.30 p.m. following the RBI's uh, February 8th circular extending trading hours for various markets. The changes will come into effect from the 23rd of February. And Vladimir Putin accuses the West of inciting a global war to destroy Russia, pulls back from its nuclear arms treaty with the U.S., says the Kremlin will carry out new nuclear tests if Washington does. U.S. President Biden at a rally in Warsaw says Russian forces are in disarray but warns of tough times ahead for democracy in Eastern Europe. Hi guys, a very good morning and welcome to Power Breakfast. I'm Pavitra Parekh. Those are the top headlines that we have for you as we get into this new trading day. There's lots for us to talk about. There's lots that happened overnight. But really what's top of mind is the global markets because there was a sharp rally that we saw in, uh, you know, in the US and that is now playing out in the Asian markets as well. So we've seen all of the Asian markets open with cuts. What's doing the worst this morning is the Nikkei market as well as the Korean Kospi. Both of them seeing cuts of a percent and a half right now. Hans Seng was managing to hold in the green all, uh, you know, through early trade, but right now that has slipped around 70 points in the red as well. So across the board, there are cuts coming through for the Asian markets. Hong Kong down 70 points, the Taiwanese index seeing cuts of over 1%. And whether you look at the Shanghai Straits, all of them are seeing cuts between two tenths of a percent to half a percent. But like I pointed out, what's looking the worst is the Japanese market as well as the Korean market to start off. The SGX Nifty is up on your screen. It is indicating a weak start for our own markets as well. Around 70 points lower is what we have on the SGX Nifty. But let's also talk about the US markets. Wall Street indices capped their worst day of the year so far. This is concerns over rate high concerns continue to weigh on sentiments so the Dow Jones shed nearly 700 points the S&P 500 was down 2% at the close and the tech heavy Nasdaq also lost 2.5% CNBC Steve, uh, Steve Kovac is here to bring us a wrap of uh, what was clearly a very hectic session on Wall Street Markets posting a sharp loss to begin the shortened trading week. Retail heavyweights Walmart and Home Depot both warned of a slowing consumer when they reported earnings this morning, and that was enough to spook investors. The Dow closed down a hair over 2%. The S&P ended an even 2% lower, and the Nasdaq finished down 2.5%. Amazon employees are asking CEO Andy Jassy to reconsider a recent return-to-work mandate. Employees created an internal petition and Slack channel to share their concerns about the new policy. Almost 14,000 employees joined the Slack channel as of this morning. Jassy last week said the company would require corporate staffers to be in the office at least three days a week beginning May 1st. And Facebook and Instagram could see over 10 million paying subscribers by the beginning of next year, according to Bank of America. The bank said that the new verified subscription service that Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg announced over the weekend could prove popular for influencers and businesses. The new service starts at $12 a month and is currently being tested in Australia and New Zealand. That's what's happening here in the U.S. Back to you in Mumbai. All right, that is some important opinion coming in on the U.S. markets. But let's also bring you the last update from our global market wrap this morning. European markets ended Tuesday's uh, trading session marginally lower, so not quite as bad as what we saw play out in the U.S. or, you know, even in Asia right now. The French CAC index was down around 27 points. The DAX slipped around 80 points at the close. And the British FTSE closed with cuts of around 37 points. Some important data also came through from the Eurozone area. Business activity in that area has grown faster than expected for the 
month of February, uh, strengthening the region's rebound from last year's energy crisis. The S&P Global's Eurozone Purchasing Managers Index rose to 52.3. This is versus the 50.3 that we saw in January. So there has been a good rise over there. Additionally, business activity in the UK, France and Germany also turned positive in February for the first time that we've seen in months. The British pound surged against the US dollar. This after the UK government ran an unexpected budget surplus in January, reflecting strong income tax receipts. So that's uh, something important that we're tracking as far as the Eurozone area goes. But that's everything that we're looking at globally. Let's now talk about all of the individual cues that you should look at when we get into this fresh trading session. Our research team is here with the trade setup. Ekta, Mangalam and Surbi all join me now. Guys, a very good morning to all of you. Ekta, let me come to you first. Uh, we were just talking about the global setup and it is perhaps likely to be a lot about that today. Thanks for that. Well, yes, yesterday, you know, was a range bound session for us. The Nifty, in fact, closed lower for the third consecutive session. Nifty closed at around 17,826. The near term support level for the Nifty seems to be around the 20 day moving average of around uh, 17,847. But there is some amount of resistance which is now firming up at around the 18,000 levels for the Nifty. FII's net bought around 525.8 crores, so that was definitely a positive. The FII's have bought, in fact, in seven out of the past 15 sessions in the cash market. So maybe the trend could be, uh, you know, moving a little more towards more buy figures coming in from the FII's. DII's net sold over 230 odd crores. Now, in terms of the global markets, the US markets did cap off what was one of the worst days in 2023. The US PMI for the month of February in fact came in at an eight month high indicating that maybe the Fed would have to continue acting in terms of raising rates. Asia largely weak, SGX is indicating a bit of a soft start as well. Brent crude has fallen around 1%, so currently between $82 to $83 per barrel. In terms of queues, we do have the Fed minutes due today, as well as the RBI MC min MPC minutes, which are uh, due this week as well. So that would be important to watch. The near term levels for the Nifty should come up for you. I already spoke about the 20 DMA. The other levels to watch on the upside would be the 100 as well as the 50 day moving average. All right, Ekta, thanks a lot for that. We will watch out for these key levels on the Frontline Index. But let's also talk about the individual stocks that, you know, that could be in focus in today's trading session. Survey standing by with that entire list. Survey. Good morning. Very few stock specific cues this morning. The first one is BEL, where the company signs an MOU with ADA and DRDO for Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft Program. The next is Mirza International, where NCLT has approved amalgamation of RTS fashions and also approved the demerger of branded business into Red Tape Limited. Petronet LNG, where the tenure of CFA, uh, CFO Vinod Kumar Mishra is extended for another two years. And lastly, Work Hard, where the management met with some analysts yesterday and they mentioned that they will do an annual savings of $12 million through restructuring. The restructuring includes shutdown of manufacturing facility at Morton Grove and also they have an agreement with Serum for vaccine manufacturing at their UK facility. All right, Surbhi, thanks a lot for bringing us those individual stocks. Not much happening over there, but, you know, we will watch out for these few names. Mangalam also joins us now with all of the cues from the futures and options space. Hi, Mangalam. Good morning. So yesterday was a rather range-bound trade. We had, you know, uh, the Nifty trading between about 125 odd points. 17, 925 was the highs uh, in yesterday's trading session, whereas the low was 17,800. But the close was extremely important because it closed at 17,827, which is absolutely in line with the 20-day moving average, which is at 17,824. So the question is, where do we go from here? The FIS, they bought around 500 crores in the cash market. The DII sold about 235 odd crores. But it was interesting that in index futures, the overall purchase was close to around 966 crores. And if you break that into the Nifty as well as the Nifty Bank, there was an even keel. The Nifty Bank saw a purchase of almost 415 odd crores. And that will be, you know, the key to watch out for in today's trading session as well. Why is that? Because if you just take a look at the way the FII has performed in index futures, they covered about 10,600 shots. The fact that the Nifty Bank outperformed for most of yesterday's trading session and actually did not fall further made uh, the FIS cover their short positions in the Nifty Bank. As you can see, the Nifty open interest was up 2%, whereas the Nifty Bank open 
open interest was down 6%. And the FIs also went ahead and cut about 1.5 lakh short calls. What were those calls that they cut? They cut almost 18, uh, you know, 20 lakh shares on the 18,000 call for a premium of almost uh, 19, 20 odd rupees. But the other active options tell you about the range that uh, the street is eyeing for expiry tomorrow. 17,800 call has a premium of 90 odd rupees. The 17,800 put also comes up for you. Has added around 17 lakh shares in open interest, 50 rupee premium. So basically playing for a 150 rupee premium. The writers of the 17,800 call and put are playing for a range of 17,650 on the nifty at the lower end and 17,950 on the upper end. Were the markets to break this, it will have to be the nifty bank, which uh, has room all the way up to its 20-day moving average, which is 600 points away from here, to perhaps go ahead and move higher. And if were that to happen, the Nifty may go back to levels upwards of 18,000 as well. We'll keep an eye out on that. All right, we will keep an eye out on that. Mangalam, thanks a lot for taking us through all of those cues. We do have to get into our first short break on the show now, but there's lots more news and updates lined up for you, so stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. You're still tuned into Power Breakfast. Now, there's lots of important news that came through overnight. For starters, the National Stock Exchange has extended trading hours for interest rate derivative contracts. This is up until 5 p.m. from the current 3.30 uh, p.m. that we had. Contracts for February 2023 will now be available for trading till 5 p.m. on expiry day. That is tomorrow, like we all know. And remember, this comes after the RBI on the 8th of February extended trading hours for various markets that it regulates, including rupee interest rate derivatives. This is something Something that we were talking about yesterday as well there was buzz around it and that has come through um, some more news that's for you know that's important from the market regulator is that they are looking to strengthen corporate governance and they floated a consultation paper to amend norms for listed entities with a special interest to protect shareholders so SEBI's latest consultation paper seeks to address PACs binding listed entities grants a special rights to some shareholders as well it also addresses the sale disposal or lease of assets of listed entities outside the scheme of arrangement frameworks Remember, all of this comes just days after the entire Adani saga really shook the markets. The paper also seeks to address the matter of board permanency as list, you know, at listed entities. The regulator has invited comments now from the public, and this is open up until the 7th of March. So that's some important news that we're tracking uh, you know, from the market regulator as well. We are yes. going to get into a short break now, but on the other side, we're going to shift focus and take you through everything that's happening in the world of commodities. Crude prices have slipped once more, so we'll talk about that. Hey guys, welcome back to Power Breakfast. Let's talk about the commodity space as promised now. Manisha joins us for an update. Manisha, it seems like the rate hike fears which have hit the equity market so sharply overnight are really weighing on commodities as well. Oh, well, absolutely, Pavitra. We have seen the crude oil prices continue to decline further and now just about at $82 a barrel. Yes, it has been more than a percentage point of a decline here yet again. Further U.S. Fed rate hike estimates are weighing into the market. And even as there is optimism over China transportation demand, production curbs coming in from Russia as well as well, the market's really not able to keep their head above the water. Same is the case with the natural gas prices here as well. We have seen prices fall below $2.2. The above normal temperatures and higher inventories continue to weigh into these markets. But good going, especially in case of the base metal prices. Here, in any case, we started the year with very low inventories. And whatever China demand is coming in right now, and this being the peak demand season, there is a lot of support coming in for many of these metal prices. They are also under pressure because of uh, the U.S. Fed rate hike concerns. But at this point in time, we are looking at a steep and iron ore prices trading at a seven-month highs. It has been very strong gains in nickel overnight. Zinc is now trading near five-month highs as well. And copper prices shut up by nearly a percentage point higher in the New York session. So metals is a sector to keep an eye on. Bullishness continues there. All right, bullishness continues for the metals. Manisha, thanks a lot for bringing us that update. But with that, let's also talk about, um, you know, Russian President Vladimir Putin's State of the Nation address. So he has blamed the West of inciting the Ukraine war, saying that it was the West that was actually encouraging Ukraine to attack Russia. Putin's long televised address came a day after Biden's unscheduled Kyiv visit and ahead of the one-year anniversary of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Putin has also announced his plans to withdraw from the New START, which is the last major remaining nuclear arms control treaty with the Americas. 
Uh, Ukraine said that Putin's speech has demonstrated his irrelevance as well as confusion. And U.S. President Joe Biden, remember, is also in Poland for discussion with NATO allies and ways of strengthening the military alliance's eastern flank. Biden also met with his Polish counterpart in Warsaw. Remember, last year, the U.S. president ceded to Poland's request for a permanent base on its uh, territory. All right, so that is an important update that we had to bring you. But with that, we are going to wind down on this edition of Power Breakfast with the news that the Asian markets have only slipped further. So you have the Hong Kong market, which is down six tenths of a percent. You have Taiwan, um, Nikkei, Kospi, all seeing cuts of around a percent and a half. The SGX Nifty at the low point of the day, it's a near 80-point cut. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Bazaar Morning Call after this short break.